Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 20 bucks or so. And the last time I played a Five Nights at Freddy's game, I don't know. I mean, there's been so many <laughs> renditions, I can't keep up with them anymore. Uh, anyway, um, I know I played the first one, uh, that was a classic, and then I played a couple of other ones after that. And I got a press key for this one, and it had overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. I'm like, it looks different. So let's give it a try and see what it's like. And if I had to describe this game, it's a choose-your-own-adventure with some like 2.5D side-scrolling. Like you'll be able to go into doors. Like there's there's buildings and then you can go to different doors. There's a map that you can interact with, which is cool. Uh, you can kind of see where everything is. There's quest log. So it's like a little 2.5D RPG of sorts. And I use that term very loosely, but there's going to be quests and you'll be able to pick up items for your inventory. There are puzzles to complete. That kind of thing. And the whole gist of this is you're like left to your own devices at this pizzeria and you find this ball pit that uh, it says do not use on it. But of course, you know, being a kid, you're rebelling against your dad because of how badly he's treating you, whatever. And you end up like warping into a completely different area. And then you find out it's like a time travel thing. And you end up going to a different time period where things are different and, you know, there's new people and, you know, you're trying to make sense of that. So you've got like this little back to the future kind of thing going on, which is really cool. So you interact with new people, new friends. And uh, of course, after that, things get a little hairy and things don't exactly, you know, go the way that they're supposed to. So anyway, um, at some point, crap hits the fan. And you're left to figure out, okay, how do I get out of this awful situation that I'm in? And eventually you'll come across what looks like to be the main villain. I I, I guess it's Fozzie Bear. I, I don't know these people. Uh, again, it's been a while. But um, a lot of this involves running from whatever creature is going after you and... Uh, hoping that the door is not locked, <laughs> which sucks because sometimes like when you're stuck in the animation of opening a door, the creature still runs at you and then it catches you and that that's frustrating at times. But luckily when you do die, you typically just restart where you left off and you try again. Now you will advance to a point where you're able to get out of that initial bad situation, but like I thought, oh, that's it? Well, no, there's a lot more to it than that. And in fact, you are going to be spending some of your time going back and forth between different areas. And I just thought that was really cool. And I actually got one ending within five to ten minutes of playing this game. Like, uh, the credits started rolling because I had found, a, a, I guess, an ending that really didn't resolve anything. But it was an ending nonetheless. And it was just weird. So this is a choose-your-own-adventure with multiple endings and puzzles and decisions on where you want to go next, mainly. And there's also a lot of hidden stealth in this game. You've got this little noise meter that you have to manage, and uh, you can activate objects in the environment in order to distract the enemy uh, so that you can sort of get to where you need to be without being caught. Uh, and then there's hiding in this game as well and in, in, in the sense that you have to you there are different objects in the environment that you can hide behind or under and there's a little mini game that plays whenever you do that and luckily in the options menu you're able to set that to be automatic which is kind of nice so if you don't feel like dealing with mini games you can set it to automatic meaning the computer will automatically succeed on these mini games on your behalf and it's just a way of like you know, if you're not very good with QTE events, then at least you'll be able to to deal with that easily. But yeah, like what intrigues me the most about this game is I feel like I have a lot of freedom to do different things. And I'm curious to know, like, what happens if you go here? What happens if you go there? What if I don't do it this time? What what if I what if I go here next time? Or what what if I you know, try this out and see what happens then. And I'm I'm really curious to like see a branching 
tree of the different areas that I can go in and how I can see. I want to see all the different endings, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And it just, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing like, you know, the end of this, the true end. I haven't gotten there and I'm, I'm purposely trying to not show you anything that would spoil too much. Like, I want to show you some gameplay, but I also don't want to spoil it, because this is very narrative heavy. Uh, speaking of narrative, there's two difficulties in this game. There's, like, creepy, which is the default, and then there's something else, which is, like, just a regular narrative, which isn't as bad. Um, I may try that out in the future, just so I can speed the story along and then try out different paths as I go. So, all in all, for 20 bucks, I do recommend it, but you have to be into stealth sequences, and you have to be into choose your own adventures with some puzzle elements to it, but... All in all, it's decent, and I'm enjoying it, and I can't wait to go back to it. This is Vince. Thanks for watching. Catch you all next time. Take care.